you have arrived at the Z train station. We're getting ready to depart and take you to a place that you're going to like. I know where you're going and I'm going to help you get there in style. Z train, help. I train you to win. Praise God. Well, let us pray and get into the word. I have a very important message for you today that's going to help you for the rest of your life. All right. Praise God. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for blessing all my friends and partners and everyone who is watching and listening to this Z Train live stream broadcast right now. Whether it's live or you're listening to a recorded version, it's still blessed and anointed. Amen. Praise God. All right. I want to talk to you about Bible interpretation and hermeneutics. Wait, I know, I know that sounds kind of deep, but listen, uh, we've got to rightly divide the word of God. We have to study to show ourselves approved unto God, uh, rightly dividing the word of God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. I'm pretty sure I reversed the order of that scripture, but that's the gist of it. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. And listen, there is nothing more embarrassing than, than having the wrong interpretation of a scripture. And then when you find out the right one, to keep on saying it the wrong way, let's don't do that. Let's have some integrity and some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some, um, some academic excellence. Because after all, we are students of the Bible. And Bible interpretation is, is very important. There are some basic rules that we need to follow. Now, I'm going to look at a very common scripture today one that you know, one that we all know, and I'm going to apply rules of Bible interpretation. And when I'm done, you're going to understand faith better, and it's going to work for you better, and you're going to accomplish more by faith, I promise you in Jesus' name, if you receive this and if you apply what I'm telling you. So what I want you to do is I want you to uh, either go to Hebrews 11.1 1, or just stir up your, your memory, okay? Uh, there is a way that people preach this, and I've heard it preached, and i got to tell you, this is a little embarrassing. I, I've preached it this way, too, until I found out better. And, um, well, you know, God winks at our ignorance in times past. It's it's one thing to make a mistake out of out of ignorance. It's another thing to do it out of malice. So all we do is mend and adjust. You know what I'm talking about? We don't know everything. If we did, uh, then we'd be doing everything right. And if we were doing everything right, we'd be getting better results. Don't you agree? Okay, uh, here's the message. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not of things not seen. And if you ask people to define faith with Scripture, they'll take you to Hebrews 11.1 1 and say, here's a definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I am going to present to you that this is not a definition of faith, and you can't apply it as a definition. There is a better definition for faith. This is a very important scripture, but it really isn't a definition of what faith is. It's a description of what faith does. Faith gives substance to things we hope for, and it provides evidence of things we, uh, we don't see. More about that in a minute. But here's the message that Preachers like to preach, and and uh, you've heard it before, emphasizing the now. Now faith is. If it's not now, it's not faith. It's got to be right now. Well, I agree. It is important to have faith in this moment, but it's a continuum. We continue in faith. So I guess you could say every now is a faith now, but if it's not now, it's not faith. And what they mean by that to preachers who preach that, is that you've got to believe God at this very moment. Well, uh, really and truly, uh, now in this, in this particular scripture is not a verb. It's not a noun. It's a conjunction. It's a connecting word, and it's connected with the previous thought. So uh, let me give you some, uh, some examples of other definitions of the word now in the Greek. It, you could substitute it with, with uh, the word and, 
and faith is the substance of things hoped for. But you, it wouldn't be a very exciting sermon to say, if it's not and, it's not faith. <laughs> it also means moreover. If it's not moreover, it's not faith. It also means likewise. If it ain't likewise, it ain't faith. You see how that doesn't work? It doesn't work if you understand it's a conjunction. Now, if it were a noun, and, um, and you know, the Bible is full of examples of things that happen right now, and that's, that's a noun. Now my daughter is dead. Well, that's the word D, like you'd hear in Spanish, uh, uh, the, uh, the preposition D. And uh, uh, D actually in the Greek is a noun, beg your pardon, a verb, and it means right now in this present moment, uh, kairos moment, right at this instant. And that's not the word that we see in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Are you tracking with me? Praise God. Now in Hebrews 11.1 1 is a conjunction. It means moreover, likewise, and nevertheless, or after. And there are some other words you could substitute here. But let's see, uh, let's see where this is in context, because now is a conjunction, and you have to conjunct, you have to join it with the previous thoughts. And what I would do is recommend you go up to Hebrews 10:38 to establish the context. And in Hebrews 10:38, it says, "Now the just shall live by faith." Likewise, faith is a substance of things hoped for. You see, those two thoughts are joined. Hebrews 10.38 would be the antecedent for what Paul is talking about. And then his precedent would be Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Praise God. And notice that please him is relational. It's something you do toward God or for God. So here are the bookends. The, the antecedent is Hebrews 10.38, now the just shall live by his faith. The scripture, the text we're studying right now that we're trying to interpret is Hebrews 11.1, 1, now the faith is the substance of things hoped for. And then the precedent, the bookend that follows and sandwiches uh, or props up Hebrew 11.1 1, is without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the context is faith and its relationship to God. So let's go back and, and look at this just one step at a time. Now, faith is the substance, gives substance, provides a, provides a, a substrate, a foundation for things we hope for, and it provides the evidence of things we, we don't see. Now, these are actually legal terms. For example, Evidence that we don't see in the courtroom right now, but we have evidence for it. You know, we have evidence that someone was somewhere. We don't see them at this point now, but we see the evidence that they were there. Do you follow me? It's a legal term. So Hebrews 11.1 1 is a legal term, and it says faith gives the substance, provides evidence that something we can't see has occurred or is occurring. Praise God. Now, let me give you a better definition of faith, and I recommend you write this down or memorize it. I'll say it two or three times so you get it. And this particular definition that I'm going to give you will work for you in wherever you see the word faith, pretty much. And uh, that is faith is confidence in the veracity of, of God's word. Faith is confidence. It's like uh, to, to, to uh, respond in good faith. Someone promises you something and you have confidence in what they promise, and that's called faith. It's relational. It always takes two or more parties, two individuals or two or more parties, to uh, create a good faith situation. One group has to promise or imply something that they're going to do, and the other group or individual has to believe that they're good for the word, that they're going to do it. Now, how do you like it when someone doubts your word? You say, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll meet you tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock, and the person responds by, yeah, sure, really? <laughs> we'll see. We'll wait and see. That would hurt your feelings. Well, listen, when God promises something, it hurts his feelings 
I don't know if that's the right word, but it doesn't please him. That's correct. If we don't trust what he promised us, if we don't believe in what he said, that's why uh, that's why Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him because if we doubt his word, he is displeased. If we doubt what he as an individual, as God has promised us, just like you're not pleased when someone doubts your word. I'm not pleased. I'll talk about myself. If I tell someone something, if they doubt me, I'm displeased because my word is good. My word is my bond. I'm going to do my utmost to keep my word. And in life, when things come up that prevent us from meeting some someone someplace or doing something, I always get a hold of that person and say, look, I, I promised you this, but we're going to have to change the time here. But I want to make sure that they know that I'm good for my, my word. I'm not just saying things randomly that I have no intention of verifying or or keeping my word, God always keeps his word. He swore by his word above his name, praise God, because his word is good. He created the whole world, the universe, by his word. And if his word is not good, then nothing is really established. Nothing is is going to succeed anywhere. In, in fact, there wouldn't be anything right now if God weren't upholding all things by the power of his word. Well, the power of his word is that he means what he says, and he says what he means, and he doesn't change. He's not like people who are wishy-washy and untrustworthy. When God promises something, he absolutely believes it, and he's guaranteed it by the blood of Jesus. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. So what is faith? Faith is confidence in the veracity or the truthfulness of God's word. And you can use this over and over and over in the scriptures. Let me see if I can find a, uh, a couple of uh, examples for you. Praise God. Um, I don't know if I can. I can't read my own writing. That's the problem. Uh, my, my word is plain. My writing is a little iffy. But what I'm talking about here is how to apply the definition of faith. Now, if Jesus said, uh, uh, thy faith has made thee whole, and we try to apply Hebrews 11, 1 as the definition, you won't, you'll see it doesn't work. You remember the story of a, the paralyzed person and Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. And so uh, now the substance of the things you're hoping for and the evidence of things you don't see has made you whole. That doesn't work. But use my definition. Confidence in the word of God has made you whole. See, that works. Uh, what if I were to use this and, and remember uh, Jesus saw four men carrying a man on a bed and when he saw their faith, he healed the man. So when he saw the substance of the things they hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, he healed them. No, that doesn't work. When he saw their confidence in his word. Yeah, that one works. Praise God. So uh, the definition that I'm giving you will work uh, all the time. How about this one? Oh, ye of little faith. Uh, oh, ye of little faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You see how that makes no sense at all? But if I could say, oh, ye of little confidence in the word of God, that makes sense. So uh, faith is having confidence in the veracity of God's word. And um, the other thing I want to point out is faith is always a relationship. People try to have faith apart from the word of God. They're just hoping. That's all. They're just wishing. We have a saying in Texas, if wishes were horses, even beggars would ride. Let me say it again. You can think about it. If wishes were horses, even beggars would ride. You know, uh, without God in the picture, it's just a wish. You're just King's X, Ali Ali in free. I wish on a star. I hope so. It ain't going to happen. You've got to have a promise a specific word from God and have confidence in that promise that what God said he will do. So faith is a relationship. You have to go back to the person who swore or promised, and that's God. And you can't have faith apart from God. That's some sort of a, uh, I don't know what that is. Is that magic? 
is that uh, uh, some sort of a new age uh, mind over matter, uh, telekinetic, uh, creating something out of your own mind? Uh, that's how people apply it sometimes, because if you've left God out of the picture and you're trying to have faith in your own faith and faith in your power to, to you know, think something into existence, well, you know, uh, that's just not going to work. I'm here to tell you that is some sort of a, a magic or mysticism. Mysticism, not the right word, but I'll put it this way. It's wrong. If you're attempting to believe God just within your own power, then you don't need God. If you've got enough power to create something, if you have enough power to produce a miracle, you don't need God. You don't need Jesus. You don't need to be saved. You can save yourself, heal yourself. No, 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 and no. You've got to put God back in the equation. Faith is a relationship. Enoch, please God. Abel brought a more acceptable sacrifice to God. Abraham uh, trusted God, and uh, he believed him. He went out looking for a city with foundations whose builder and maker was God. Noah built an ark because God said so. Every one of these people did something in response to what God had said to them. Praise God. God said to me and to my wife to move to Spain. He actually gave a scripture out of Roman where Paul says, I'm going to Spain and you're going to help me get there. That became our rhema. And we said, bless God, we're going to Spain. God had spoken to both of us. We had scripture. It was a real rhema word. And we went to Spain and thank God we did because we are in the very middle of the will, center of the will of God. And that's a place of power. That's a place of peace. That's a place of safety. You see, you got to have a relationship. How would I spell faith? R-E-L-A-T-I-O-N-S-H-I-P, W-I-T-H-G-O-D, a relationship with God where we trust, honor, and obey his word. We believe his word. Faith is confidence. Praise God. In the truthfulness of God's word. Well, uh, there are. The fallacy of informal logic is people have false prop, uh, propositions. You know, now faith is, if it's not now, that's not substantiated by Scripture. It's based upon a false premise. The word is wrong. Therefore, uh, the doctrine that they're building off of that incorrect uh, word is an incorrect doctrine. We have to rightly divide the word of truth. I'm trying to help you be a, a good student and have some academic excellence and integrity when it comes to interpreting the scripture. Because if we interpret scripture incorrectly, people are going to lose confidence in us in our, in our beliefs, in our ministries, in what we say. So it's very important. And this is important. If you want the word to work, then you have to understand how to correctly apply the word of God. So all it takes is, is one exception to disapprove, to disprove <laughs> hypotheses. And if people are saying now means right now faith is, and if it's not right now, it's not faith. All I have to do is find one exception to that. And I have disproved their hypothesis which I just did. So does that mean I've taken something away from you? No, I've given you more meaning for Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now you're a better student, a better disciple, and you're going to get better results. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to help you. Now listen, be with me tomorrow because I'm, uh, we're going to revisit faith, what faith is and what faith does. And it's going to help you. Sometimes if we just see things uh, in a slightly different perspective, if we have just a different point of view, if we, if we understand things just a little more clearly, it'll make a profound difference. And I plan on rocking your world tomorrow with a further understanding of what faith is and, and how faith works. And you, you may think you know everything about it. Well, you probably thought you understood Hebrews 11.1. 1. All I'm trying to do is help you. So uh, if, you, if you are a seeker of the truth, you want to know the truth, then uh, I'm doing my best to give you the truth. 
And uh, I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm not going to do is I'm not ever going to make something up or invent something and try to pass it off as being true because I have too much respect for God and God's word and I have too much respect for you to do anything foolish like this. Let me hear an amen. Good teaching, Brother Larry. Yay. I feel so good about what you're teaching me. You're helping me. I'm going to send an offering to your ministry. Good for you. Because he that sows spiritual things into your life, the correct response is to sow natural things back to him. So thank you to all of my partners out there who, who help bless this ministry with tithes and offerings. And you can do that uh, with a text to give, 408-681-8155-GIVE. No, I don't think I gave that to you right. Let me... Uh, I want to make sure I'm saying that right. I don't want you to send your tithe to the wrong place. I mean, send it to your church if that's where it belongs. But uh, let me see here. See if I can do this. Anyway, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put this in the comment section. Text to give. I don't think that's the number at all. I think that was our cross out number. It's stuck in my mind. The other thing to do is just go to my website, which is zchurch.org life, life, and uh, you can click on the giving uh, selection in the menu and you're set. I hope you come to be with us Saturday, every Saturday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time for Z Church. Uh, the Z Church platform, live platform is interactive. You might get a word from God. Who knows? I recommend it. It's really a great way to participate because you can see and be seen. We pray together, worship together, sing in the spirit, pray in tongues. We're Holy Ghost people, Word of Faith people. You're going to love it. Or if you want to have uh, another pretty good experience, you can participate by Facebook Live or YouTube Live. And I'll put that in the comments section also. But um, the website to remember is zchurch.life.